Amen. We're, uh, we know the Lord is uh, in charge of everything. And uh, happy 2020, what is it, 2024, isn't it? Yeah. 2024 already. T the tenth day. Can you believe that? And uh, one thing we know, it's uh, getting closer to the coming of the Lord. How many are waiting for the Lord to come back? He said we, he's looking for people that are looking up, looking for his return. We don't have too much time left, but we know that we're keeping an eye uh, on Israel and praying for Israel, aren't we? How many are still praying for Israel? And uh, they're going through a lot, but uh, I heard an Israeli uh, Rabbi, one, uh, not too long ago, uh, he, they was interviewing him, and they said, what do you think? Is, is this the end? Is this going to be causing the return of the Lord? Uh, he's a Messianic Jewish person, you know, believes in Jesus as a Messiah. And he said, well, as long as uh, the United States is helping out, uh, they're, they're interfering uh, from, from the fulfillment of the Scripture, which says that when Israel is surrounded by all their enemies, which they already are, aren't they? But when they start coming at them from the north, well, we know who that is, the bear. The Bible says, I, ha I had an old pastor, Carl Stewart, used to preach about that. The coming of the Lord's good beak, when the big bear comes, tried to take over, tried to defeat Israel. Right now, uh, God's protection is on Jerusalem, isn't it? And the, uh, the Arabs... They, they, they don't want to mess with Jerusalem because right there they got a, 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 a temple of theirs, don't they? Yeah, they? They're not going to invade it because they, that's one of their holiest temples, you know. The first one is Mecca, some other place in the world. Uh, they keep, it, uh, keep us from knowing all these things. But we know the Lord's coming. And this rabbi was saying, uh, as soon as, if Jesus, uh, if Jesus tarries, and, but if the uh, United States steps out, and does not defend Israel, and they're left all alone, that's when the end will come. Isn't that something? We know the scripture, Matthew 24, 14, and this gospel shall be preached into all the world as a witness, and then the end will come. But we, we're, we're, we're involved in there, aren't we? The church of Jesus Christ, we're involved. As we got to keep preaching, sending out missionaries, preparing our young people, and we're thankful that our youth group has been formed here. And how many are praying for our youth group here? Yeah. Out of them, we're going to receive the, the help we need for the classrooms and to, to establish uh, his kingdom. And uh, God is preparing young people also. Praise God. So, so today, today we're thankful. Uh, uh, we're going to go to the word and prayer first. We're going to speak tonight on the, on the subject uh, uh, it's, it's very brief, but uh, God has revealed himself to Israel uh, uh, in, a, uh, in a way, it, it, if you find your Bible there, uh, we don't have time to read it, but Genesis 17, 1, it's talking about uh, the, the name of, of the Lord, and it's, in the original, it's, it's talking about El Shaddai. You ever heard that name? One of the seven names of God, El Shaddai. And this year, my wife and I, we, we would pray in the name of El Shaddai. What does it mean, El Shaddai? The God of more than enough. Amen. Amen. You don't need a bigger bank account. You don't need a better, be, better salary. All we need is El Shaddai. The God that provides for every need that we have. Aren't you glad for that? Amen. He provides for all of our needs. And... Uh, if you found it, remember that verse, Genesis 17, 1, where it's the name of God Almighty is introduced as El Shaddai. One of the seven names described to, for, the, for the people of Israel. And we can stand on, on those names he's given. Uh, and we, you know what Isaiah names there? The, the, the coming of the Lord and the different names that we, we've learned uh, for, uh, about Jesus, his son. Praise God. He has many names, and one of them is Jehovah. We're not afraid of Jehovah. We need to be beyond Je Jehovah's Witnesses, don't we? They think they're the only one. No, no. That's just one of his many names. We don't just stand on Jehovah. We stand on all the rest of them uh, that, that God has revealed through the Scriptures. How, how many love the, the Word of God? 
we, we love it. We stand on it. We quote it. We memorize it. And uh, my grandfather got saved when he, they came to Texas in 19, uh, 1908. They came across. My dad was five, five years old. They came from northern Mexico because there's a, there was a war going on in, in Mexico. Well, the, Mexico's had a lot of wars, you know. But uh, uh, this time, it came to the north. There was coal mines there. My grandpa used to work in the coal mines in the northern part of Mexico. And this is what happened. They were stealing the little girls. They, they lived in a little town named Progreso. And uh, in that little town, they would raid those towns for food, clothing. And if they saw a little girl, 12, 13 years old, they would take them. Well, my, my grandpa and grandma had three girls. And they said, they're not going to take our girls. We're going across the big river, <laughs> the Rio Grande. And so they came. No papers required. Just pay a nickel, Pastor, five cents for each one of them. And they came and they told, uh, they instructed him, the coal miners over there, go to Fort Worth. Because just west out of Fort Worth, there's coal mines. You, you, oh, okay, I can go work there. This is before he knew the way. My grandpa did not know the way. He was, they, were, they said they were religious Catholics, but many of them are, don't have any connection with, with the Catholic Church. Well, that was my grandpa. And before he, they came across, you know what he did? He was reading Mein Kampf. Yeah, he was reading material... That, that was contrary to the word of God. And, uh, and he would go to his priest. And he, said, he would say, Padre, can you get me a Bible? What? I want a Bible. I, I'm tired of reading this other stuff. They tell me the Bible has a lot of things about God. And he, my grandpa was hungry for God. And guess what the priest, he kept insisting to his priest. Father, uh, uh, can you get me a Bible? And he refused. He said... He said, Severo, Severo, that was my grandfather's name. I can't get you a Bible because if you do, you, this is going to happen to you. <laughs> this is going, and exactly that's what happened. He didn't get the Bible there, but he got it when they got to Texas and the coal mines there. Uh, on a Sunday morning, on a, on a big horse, all, a man dressed all in black with a big Bible came and he talked Spanish. And he told them about God. He was a Methodist preacher. You know, the, the, the Methodist church was very strong back in there. They were evangelizing. They were reaching out to the lost. And they came to that, that community of coal miners, and they introduced themselves to God. Well, it wasn't that way that my, 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 my father, grandfather got saved, or the Menchaca family. It was when they, they, there was a, a group of uh, Mexican people in the bottom of a riverbed. They called them brush arbors. They would put just, uh, you know, uh, uh, cut limbs and, and try, to, uh, try to get in the shade. And they met the Lord Jesus there when my grandpa got consumption. And, Pastor, you know what consumption I, Is that cancer back in those days? I don't know. Consumption. My, my grandfather developed that. And the doctor told him, Severo, get ready because you're going to die. Well, my grandma found out that they were praying for the sick down in that brush arbor. And he wouldn't go. He would not go. And she would take off. And one time, my grandma forgot her Bible. And my grandpa was out there under a tree with a mirror, broken mirror. And he didn't have, he was trying to shave, you know, with a straight edge. And he, he, but he said, well, my, this Bible's got a lot of pages here, this book. My, my wife won't know. She don't know the Bible. So she, she would rip it off and clean his face. With the Bible. He didn't know he was applying the word of God to himself. He? <laughs> he, was not, he was playing around. But he was using the pages of a Bible. To wipe that beard. Soak that off of, of him. Well later on he realized what was going on. God was after him. How many know God can chase us down? And you know he was hungry for God. And the Lord saved him. He, he, he became a long story short. He, the last part of his life, he became an assembly of God pastor among the Spanish churches, my grandpa. And then he sent his three boys to Bible school uh, in, in, in South Texas. My father was one, my uncle, and, and uh, my other uncle, two uncles. And they, they, 
they served the God and they were pastors for many years here in Texas. There in Texas. I got I to gotta remember I'm not in Texas anymore. <laughs> what part of Texas is this anyway? <laughs> Well, I, tell you, I, was, uh, I was telling our dear brother and sister back there, hey, you guys got a cold here, even in the daytime. <laughs> in Texas, at least we warm up a little bit, don't we? Well, we just heard on the news in South Texas, they had snow and ice the last few days. San Antonio, Laredo, Houston, they got, a, uh, they got part of that storm. But anyway, God is in control of everything, don't you think? Amen. He, he, he's, he, he He's no respecter of persons. Whoever is hungry, uh, if you get to the kitchen, and you know, we grew up in the kitchen, and we'd go, what, what's the best place in the kitchen? The refrigerator, isn't it? Well, we found our way there. And, and, uh, but when we were little, my, I had a twin brother, and we'd be riding our bikes out there. We'd get so hungry, go in the kitchen. Well, and my mom had some cookies there and, uh, in a jar, and sh- she was sewing at the uh, sewing machine, but she wouldn't even look at us. And she'd say, hey, just get one cookie and get out of here. <laughs> and my brother and I would say, mama, mama has an eye behind her head. She don't have to look up. <laughs> she can see us. <laughs> I remember those days. Your mom, they, they knew all about you, didn't they? Anyway, she was an old time Pentecost, my mom. Did you know that? They were grew up and. In the Pentecostal way, and w- 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 it came a time when in the Mexican churches, similar like God, they had mariachi band. You know what a mariachi band is? All those instruments and they mu- music of the world. Uh, but some of them got saved, and, and we would invite them, and I would invite them to come, uh, and they would give their testimonies how God had saved them and brought them out of that, and they, they composed new songs. To sing for God, for Jesus. And, and it, it, isn't that something how God can turn it around? But my mom, she would always tell me after church, hey, don't invite those people up here. They're, she, she was remembering her past. She couldn't get over it. That these people that were now serving the Lord, <laughs> they were singing for Jesus. And you know what? There's a lot of, uh, I just found out this week, I don't know how come it came up, but uh, about Brother Jimmy Swaggart. And uh, Jerry Lee Lewis, and Jerry Lee Lewis went to the Bible school where I met my dear wife at Southwestern, Waxhatchee. Jerry Lee Lewis was a student, and you know he, uh, after classes, he 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 didn't know what to. He'd grab his guitar, and somebody told him, "Hey, let's go across where the washeteria is, uh, and there's a little cafe there." So they went in there and started playing, and they got hired. They hired Jerry Lee Lewis, but uh, you know. And they say, we want you to play those big old, big old hits, you know. And, and so he did. And they caught him. And they dismissed him from the Bible school. He lost out. He lost out. He, recently he passed away. But he was related to, to Jimmy Swagger. And then I read uh, in my Google there, it says that Jimmy Swagger and Elvis Presley had rela- were in the same family. The mama and the daddy, they, they, were, they were assembly of God. Did you know that? And, and uh, we didn't know that. But uh, they, they tell us the end of the story of Elvis Presley. He was in his room upstairs in the bathroom, sitting there. And they found him. They found him. Oh, he had passed away. But he was reading a New Testament. He was reading a New Testament. We cannot judge anyone, can we? We might, you know, you know what? It could be we might see Elvis Presley up there in heaven. Because if he had a chance to repent, and he did it, and he passed away, we'll see him again. He knew the way. He knew the way. And you know what, Pastor? The Lord is going to call many people around here that used to serve God. And God's going to call them through the Holy Ghost. And through you and I, knocking on the door and telling them about Jesus. And telling them there's a place for you in God's house. I like our material that our pastors put out there. There's a place for you in God's house. Amen. That's a good thing to say, isn't it? Amen. And people need to know that. And, well, we need to, uh, Pastor, you need to let me preach some more because I'm just barely getting started. <laughs> what time y'all got to go home? <laughs> no, I'm, not, I'm just playing with you. But uh, aren't you glad that we know El Shaddai, the God of more than enough? 
We want more. We get closer to him and he'll give us more. But tonight we're going to talk about our God is a God who loves the new things. Do you like new things? We like new things, don't we? God likes new things. Every day he gives us a new day. You realize that? He said, well, hey, we've got to forget about yesterday, but I'm going to give you a new day for you to live for me and know my goodness. And God supplies every need. One time, one time uh, in the, we were in the ministry. My wife was working, and I had already left the airline to dedicate myself full time to the work of God. And God was su supplying the need that I thought I needed to do, but getting a secular job, God was supplying in service to Him. Uh, I, I'd like you to know, Pastor, we never were on a salary. My wife and I, all our years, 37 years, we were never on a salary. We just trusted God to supply our need. Did you know that? And God will do it. it not, to, not just to brag, but to tell you that, that God is a, a God that supplies all our needs. For a while, uh, our presbyter, we had a minister's meeting. They said, well, folks, I need to tell you all something. The Social Security Administration says, if you all want out, if you're a pastor, you can get out of Social Security. Well... Uh, we, we was hardly making it in church sometime. We lived by faith. And, and we, 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 uh, we didn't depend on, on Social Security or anything. But uh, I got out. I chose to get out. Later on, they told me, Mr. Bro Mr. Menchaca, you made a big, big mistake. When you retire, your check is not going to be that much. Your Social Security check. But guess what? The Lord has supplied our need to this day. We, we don't trust the government. The, the, even the, there's threats. They're spending the Social Security money. Our government is getting in there and stealing the money that belongs to you and I that we work for. So don't just pray for your government. Don't criticize them, but just say, Lord, let them do what's right before God. And you know what? God has supplied our need every time. And one time, she got a, she got a job part-time with American, and uh, I was... Uh, it was on a Monday. She said, can you take me to work? And I said, well, you, this is your day. You don't work on Monday. Y yeah, but a friend, a friend there wants me to work for her. So uh, I, I, I took her and, and we went. Uh, we went uh, uh, I, dro I dro dropped her off. And then she said, open the window of the car. And she said, I just want you to know we're, we're short $350 for the, this monthly payment of our house. We're short three fifty. I said, "Okay, thank you," and I left with that thought in my mind. Lord, what are we going to do? We're, we don't want to fall behind on our house payment, you know. And, and but I made my way to a little Methodist church there that had a little house, and they converted it into a thrift store, you know, uh, used clothing. And I used to go in there because uh, I liked those white shirts that those pilots turned in, you know, <laughs> and, and I would buy those shirts. You know how they have that lapel up here. And, but most of them, I'd look at the collar, and they were yellow. You know what I mean? So I, I didn't get too many of those. But neckties, now that's another thing. I like neckties. And all my ministry people, uh, birthday, Christmas, uh, Pastor's Day, they'd give me a necktie. And I accumulated so many. Uh, I think I counted one time over 400 neckties. <laughs> and now... They don't use them anymore. <laughs> the last time I went to a minister's meeting in Texas, and, and I dressed up, you know, my wife's, oh, you look nice, you got the necktie on. I went in there, nobody had a necktie on. <laughs> That's the way the world, the things change, don't they? But you know what? Many times with a necktie, I could get into places where, where if you didn't wear a tie, you couldn't get in. It meant something to some people. And, 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 and uh, you know, that, that morning, I went to that Methodist thrift store, and I said, Lord, I don't know why I'm here, but... Uh, and then, uh, then I remember these verses, how God takes care of us. Over there in Matthew, I'll read it to you. Uh, uh, it says there in Matthew chapter 6, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet, nor yet uh, for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body 
than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air, for they, they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Wow. Which, which of you, by taking thought, uh, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye, therefore, uh, why you take ye thought for, for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, how they toil uh, not. Neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and to all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. Wow. I went into that little store. Thinking I'd find those white shirts, you know, for those pilots, they, they turn them in, get new new shirts. I, I saw them, but they were all yellow. And then I saw neckties there. Oh, I said, okay, well, I get I, I, I got a dollar bill here. I'll, they're a quarter apiece. I'll get four. Well, I got the thinnest ones, you know, the newest ones looking. I got one, two, but there was one getting in my way, flapping in my way. One of those ties. And, and I got one, two... And, and a lime green one about that, that big kept getting in my way. And I said, get out of the way. I've I got to get two more. So I got three, and it kept flapping over towards me. And finally I said, I'm going to buy you two. So I had three thin ones and one. It looked like a bib. <laughs> I said, come on. So I went to the uh, to uh, check out, and, and I paid my dollar bill, went out to the car. And I, I read these verses here because my wife had told me we're short $350. Well, the Lord knows our needs, doesn't he? And you know what happened? I opened up a little white plastic bag and I pulled out those three, you know, little ones, thin ones. I said, oh, those are so nice. And then I said, oh, this ugly lime green, that big? I don't know why I bought you. But anyway, I started checking it out. And it had backing inside. You ladies know what backing is, don't you? Some, some, somebody made it, and so the wind wouldn't take it away. You know, they put backing in there. So it would stay still. Well, I put my hand in there. I said, look at that. I don't know who made this. And, and I kept putting my whole hand in that, in that necktie. And I, I jerked it down because I ran into something. And it was some money. $50 bills. $50 bills. They were new. God likes new things. But he saved them for me for many years. Anyway, I, I, I got them open. They were, they were brand new bills, $50 bills. Guess how many there were? Seven. That's total. Seven times 50 is what? $350. Whoa. I said, thank you, Lord. And the devil said, no, go back there and return them. They're not yours. I said, liar, de devil, you're a liar. I paid a dollar for these. The devil was trying to put to, uh, guilt on me, but the Lord had provided. So I, 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 I said, i got to go show my wife. So I went to American Airlines where she was working, but you can't get in there. You've got to have a badge. You, gotta, you can't just walk in there. But here was a bunch of ladies going to work, and they talking and talking, and, and I got an idea. I'll get, I'll get in this next group that comes in there. So I, I got in there, and sure enough, I just walked right in with them. They didn't even see who I was. And I went back there where my wife was. And I, but I was wearing that lime green, big old necktie. And she sees me coming and she said, how did you get in here? And why are you wearing that? I said, hey, you know what? That's a miracle tie God gave us. <laughs> and you know what? And, and, and so I showed her the money. She said, well, you better save it because Saturday the ladies are going to have a garage sale at their front. You, by 12, you've got to go to our bank and deposit those. So I saved them. I made my way to the bank that Saturday morning to deposit them. And, and I've got my deposit slip and put them up there on the counter. 
And she said, yeah. I said, yeah, I want to make a deposit. And she looks at the bills, counts them several times. And I said, oh, no. And then she goes like this. I said, oh, no, they're counterfeit. <laughs> I, I, I was sure they were counterfeit. But she said, I'll be right back. So she go back there, and the, I guess the bank president was back there, and they start looking at these bills. They start looking at them, because they can't, and I don't know what's going on, but the devil will try to put doubt in you, won't he? Yeah. He'll try to put doubt in you. But you know what happened? She came back at with a big smile, and she said, no, everything's okay. Here's your deposit slip. Well, later on I found out that what happened is those bills were so old, uh, I don't know, my wife figured it out how old they were, but they were new, stuck in that necktie. I guess maybe that, that wife did it, did it to hide it from her husband or wanted to surprise him or something. But the surprise after many years, how many years, Sister Ruth? 29, 29 years later, I get those bills. And they were new, brand new bills. Isn't that something? So God can, can save for you way ahead. To bless you and me. Amen. If we're faithful. We've got to be faithful. Well, he, God didn't want us to fall back on our payment. We paid the, the house note for that month. We're thankful that God helped us through everything. And, and that's the way God does. When we uh, call upon El Shaddai. The God of more than enough. You don't need a second job. If you've got to take care of your wife and kids. Don't, don't, don't try to outsmart God. Just trust in Him. He'll supply your need so you can be in church on Sunday and Wednesday night and help the youth. And, and w here's the thing. Sometimes we give in to the enemy, don't we? we, we all, he, he'll tell you, you ain't going to make it. And we hear that. We hear that, that, that voice. But we listen, need to hear the other voice. It says, I shall supply all your needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. He will supply your needs. Yes. Praise God. And, and uh, isn't it wonderful that we could do this? And uh, uh, Sister Dixie put, uh, put something up there, some verses there. Uh, go ahead, Sister Dixie, and put, put those up there. Praise God. God, the Creator, loves to make something new, doesn't He? He wants to make us new, doesn't He? How many have been through cancer? I was through cancer. I was uh, stage four cancer. Through my uh, uh, colon, uh, I developed a tumor. And I asked the, the surgeon, because they said, you've got to have to have surgery. I said, do I have to have the surgery? He said, well, if you want to live, <laughs> we've got, we got to get that tumor out of there. So I went through that. And, and then it jumped over to my liver. And then your liver is the biggest organ in your body. But the surgeon was from Austria. And uh, in Houston, Texas, that big hospital, E.M.R. Anderson Hospital. And he said, I uh, told my wife, I'm going to operate on him. And he's going to, uh, we, we'll take that tumor out. But, you know, we asked people to pray for me. And everybody prayed for me. And uh, after the surgery, he said, he told my wife, I removed one third of your husband's liver. I took it out. But don't worry, because that's the only organ that will grow back. Isn't that something? And, and, and then he said, uh, I just want to, I don't want to surprise you, but when I got in there, those tumors had been dried up. Those tumors were <laughs> dried up. I didn't have to do it, but I went on ahead and do it. I, I removed it. But God had already done the miracle. How many believe God can still do miracles? Amen. You know, our, our world is people, people, they don't believe in miracles. Many churches don't pray for the sick anymore. But you know what? God, with a little prayer, even little Carson can pray somebody, for somebody, and they'll be healed. Why? Because God honors faith, doesn't he? He honors faith. And we're, we're, we're people that, that, uh, that believe in prayer. Uh, uh, this, this, this evening, our God is a God who loves the new. And God wants us to... To, uh, to wait on Him. God wants us to wait on Him. How, how many like to wait? We don't like to wait, do we? We want God to do it instantly. How many got a microwave? I like to heat up food instantly. You know, but you used to have to cook it, remember? But now everything's changed. 
Everything is changed. But God says, wait on me because I'm busy doing something for you. And, and sometimes you say God delays. Ma Ma Martha and, and Mary, Jesus got there late, didn't he? And they said, Jesus, if you'd have been here, if you would have been here, our brother would not have died. And, and Jesus said, take me to see where he's buried. And they took him over there. And, and Jesus said, remove him. And the, the daughters, the sisters said, no, don't. My, Martha and Mary said, don't, don't open it up. It smells already. This is the fourth day. But you know what? What did Jesus do? Remove the stone. And then he called him by name. Lazarus, come forth. Yeah. Jim, come forth. Joel, come forth. Bonnie, come forth. Uh, Donna, come, come forth. He's called us by name. Susie, he called you by name. He knows us by name. And he's calling us to a new life. Well, how, how did he come out? Lazarus come out. You remember how he came out? All wrapped up with, with all gauze, you know. And what did Jesus tell him? Yeah. Loose him and let him go. But you know, a lot of Christians, we're still walking around like that. We're still, hey, it's time, it's time for, to let the Holy Spirit let, let you loose so you can praise Him, so you can serve Him, so you can go knock on a door next door and take them some cookies or something and win them over to Jesus. And we've got to do our part if we want to win anyone for the kingdom. Can we save anybody? No. But we know who can. We know who can transform lives like he did us. And many people are bound. Many Christians are still bound. They, they got life, but they can't move. Why? They need the, the Holy Ghost to get, them, get the uh, death clothes off so they can worship and praise God. Amen. That's why our pastor always says, y'all raise your hands. Worship God. Clap your hands. Stand up. And, and, and we got to move because if we don't, we're, we're still bound. And the devil likes to wrap us up again, doesn't he? He likes to wrap you up again so you won't be able to praise his name. No, we've got to keep doing it. You remember the battle? I don't have time to finish this message, but the, the, Mo, Moses, they were fighting the Amalekites, you remember? And, and uh, uh, Moses was there, and he saw that they, they were getting beat. And... And so they, they raised up his arms, didn't they? The church is here to raise up your arms and mine. You can't do it by yourself. Moses was a great man of God. But he needed Aaron and his brother to, to hold his arms up. And as soon as Moses was up there praising God, worshiping God, Israel was winning the battle. But when he got tired, then the enemy would come in and, and try to defeat him. And you know what? What happened? They sat him down on a rock. And you know who that rock represents? Jesus is the rock, isn't he? Amen. They sat him on a rock, and there they held up his arms. And before the night was over, they defeated the enemy. Praise God. But we, what do we got to do? Get those arms up. Yeah. We had an evangelist one time from Dallas, and he said, get those antennas up. I know y'all don't have antennas on top of your TV no more, but get them up anyway. <laughs> get them up anyway. Now it's all by streaming and all this other stuff. They did away with those antennas. But the church, we have our antennas. Can you raise them up with me tonight? Yes. Look at that. Wave them. You got, sometimes those rabbit ears, you had to move them and, and point them a different direction. And we got to do the same. We've got to raise our heads and say, Lord, I need you to help me uh, uh, to, to be triumphant. And, and uh, the New Testament also and the Psalms talk about this. We need to also pray the word. Our pastors t teach us to pray the word of God. Uh, uh, one of the Psalms that, that I like, uh, I was reading today. Uh, Psalm uh, 107 verse 20. And he sent his word and healed them and got them, out, out, uh, got them out of their troubles. He sent his word and healed them. So when you pray the word of God, God has to listen, doesn't he? 
because he's the one that wrote it. And he's, he's, he's telling his angels, he's telling Jesus, our, our Savior, hey, they're praying my words. We've got to answer them. We've got to answer them. And you know what? The Lord, the Lord sends help when we do the right things. Uh, God, uh, God hears us when we pray. Uh, he taught the disciples in Matthew 6 9 how to pray. Pray this way. Our Father which art in heaven. When I was a kid, four or five years old, my dad worked, worked at a dollar an hour. There was ten of us. Eight kids and mom and dad. And there was, there, there, with a dollar an hour, what can you, what can you do? My, grand, my mama had to make more frijoles, more beans, more rice. A little bit of chicken sometimes. And you know what I got raised on? Chicken parts, necks, and backs. <laughs> you, you can't hardly find those for sale in the stores. The only last place I found them was in Texas at H-E-B supermarket. And there they were, necks and backs. My wife said, what's that? Oh, she, they're not, well, not, most people don't know what necks and backs are. They're the cheapest part of the chicken. That's what we grew up on. We never had breast meat or, or chicken legs or anything. Uh, I'm, I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you where we're coming from. We, 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 we've come this far. Now you can't even buy necks and backs. Why? Nobody, nobody likes them. They like the other pieces, don't they? But as Christians, we have to appreciate where we're coming from. One time uh, in, in the Spanish church in Fort Worth... An older lady, Sister Trini, and we had a we got a new building from Carl Stewart, uh, old old time Pentecostal, uh, and and it, we got a new building and and we we got in there and we had to trust the Lord to help us make the payments, you know, and uh, the sad part it was an Assembly of God Church, Anglo, that passed it on to us with payments. Well, we were there. Eight, my wife and I were there eight years. And because the new pastor depended on preparing food every Sunday, the ladies got tired, didn't they? <laughs> the ladies got tired. And the payments quit coming in. And so they took the building away from them. God, God is watching, isn't he? He knows what's going on. What, how we treat our brothers and sisters. I'm thankful that our pastors love fellowship with other churches. It's one body, isn't it? With different names. It's one body with different names. If we can't get along with them, how are we going to do it in heaven? There's one church. It's a joke, I guess. They say, the Church of Christ. I shouldn't even say that. But they, 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 preach, they preach that they're the only, only church going to heaven. If you're not Church of Christ, you ain't going to make it. But you know what? When we get to heaven, Peter's going to say, what, 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 what church were you? Simply God. Okay, get over here. And where, where we church of God? Okay, see that see that big corral in there with walls? You go right in there. That's your place, because those people still think that they're the only, only ones that made it to heaven. <laughs> That's not going to be true, is it? It's going to be those that are washed in the blood, that been forgiven of their sins. Oh yeah, we stumble sometimes, but there's somebody there to pick us up. That's why we need the church, don't we? We need the church to to pick us up. And Pastor, we want to do more visitation and knock on more doors because the time is short. The time is short. Uh, I'm going to have to cut this message uh, for some other chapter two, okay? <laughs> okay. But, but aren't you glad tonight that God cares about us? Amen. He wants to supply every need. How many know the name El Shaddai tonight? Amen. Praise God. You got to call upon that name. And, you know, we go through a lot of things. But God hears every word we pray. Uh, we pray. And, and uh, uh, the last verse, uh, uh, Thessalonians 5, 17. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. We got to keep on praying, don't we? Amen. You remember those, uh, those teachers used to say, keep on trucking. Remember? Well, the Christian ought to wear, wear one says, keep on praying. And what's going to happen when we pray? God hears our prayers. Uh, I got a friend, I heard him say, Mike Murdoch, he's an evangelist. And Mike Murdoch was saying, he was 21 years old and he preached in Louisiana to Jerry Lee Lewis's family, that church there. And uh, he, after service, 
a lady comes up, and, and, and this young evangelist, he was 21 years old, said, uh, Mr. Evangelist, uh, I pray, but God don't hear me. God, what? God can't hear me. I don't know why, but I pray, and God does not hear me. I don't know why. And so he said, Mike Burdock said, well, the Holy Spirit inspired Mike Burdock to say something, you know, to this lady that God does hear. So he said, lady, you keep saying God can't hear you. Yes, he can. No, he, 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 he never hears me. Okay, do this, lady, do this. I want you to start, you know cuss words? Do you know cuss words? Yeah, I know a lot of cuss words. Okay, start saying them right now. Oh, no, I can't do that because God would hear me. God, God would hear me and he would punish me. And so, so, so my grandma said, see, see what I mean? God does hear you. He knows when you cuss words, use cuss words, and he knows when you say that little prayer before you go to bed. God hears every prayer. Aren't you glad? Father in heaven, we're thankful that we can gather your name. We thank you for the word of God. We thank you for the miracles that you want to do. We want to get to know you better in this new year, 2024. We want to serve others by serving you and winning others for you. Lord, help us to be bold. And Lord, uh, uh, you, were, you were spit upon. They cursed you. They put a crown of thorns over your head. You suffered for us. And uh, Lord, we, can't we just uh, take a little bit of, of a beating from people that say, no, I don't want to go to church with you. But Lord, help us to keep inviting them and winning them for Jesus. Lord, we ask you to bless your word tonight in our church. Bless each one, those that are working late, those that couldn't make it because they're sick. And Lord, touch them right there where they are. We ask it all in the beautiful name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Mm -hmm.